we have obviously talked a lot about your uh, your Instagram account. Yeah, our, list, us, our listeners know yeah, who you are. <laughs> you've given us a lot of material, so we really appreciate you doing that for us. <laughs> Happy to do that. Yeah. yeah. So give us some insight into how you started Preachers and Sneakers, how, where the concept came from, and just getting it going. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thanks for having me. Y'all, sure. I know this is random. Yeah, yeah. But a little bit of backstory. I was super hungry the day that I listened to y'all's <laughs> podcast, and there's some good commentary about it. And I think I might have... Uh, I might have been a little too sensitive that day. So but I'm happy that we could we could all talk because this is fun. Like I like talking to people that have interesting yeah. insights. Y'all are both pastors, so yep. it's helpful for me to get your perspective as well. So mm-hmm. um, in March, I my wife was out of town and it was Sunday and I was skipping church, but I was checking the box by watching some worship videos uh-huh. on YouTube. Nice. <laughs> and was wa- I, I was just kind of going on a deep dive on YouTube and I was watching some old elevation worship video and the the lead singer, Mac Brock was, uh, I think it was resurrecting song or resurrecting. I'm not yeah. sure of the title, but he was wearing this pair of Yeezy, uh, seven fifties, which are super rare. And, uh, I had been following sneakers for a few years, really into it. Yeah. Um, and so pretty quickly I noticed like, dude, that pair of sneakers is worth 800 bucks today. Mm. And, um, I posted something on my personal Instagram was like, I, I, the, the thing I said was, what's with these LA worship bands and their worship, like their outfits or something, how much are they possibly paying these guys that they can afford $800 sneakers? Yeah. And I was like, put me on the payroll. I'm in the wrong job. (laughs) Some snarky, but it it was in fun. And I, I like my personal followers saw it and thought it was funny. And so I basically, I didn't realize any of these dudes existed. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I started, basically just looking at more YouTube videos. And I saw a lot of the pastors and stuff wearing a lot of these really hype sneakers. And, um, so I just started, I did a few, like probably three or four videos in a row. And I had a buddy text me who's kind of in the music industry. And was like, dude, you should start an account with just that stuff. Mm-hmm. It'll be huge. Like, cause he's in LA and he said, there are people all up and down California that wear this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't like it. And a lot of people, but also a lot of people go to their churches. So it could be funny because you have a funny way of yeah. calling it out or whatever. So I, um, so I was like, all right, whatever. And there again, like it was just purely out of boredom and just trying to do something funny. Mm-hmm. So I made, I just, I was thinking of a funny name for it. And I was like, what rhymes with pastors, preachers, and sneakers came up really quick. It's like within 30 seconds. I was like, okay, the account will be preachers and sneakers. Yeah. Um, so I did that, had zero followers and I posted those videos that I posted on my other account and then started kind of, um, looking these guys up on Instagram and saw that they were all preaching in these sneakers that, um, were either designer stuff that retailed for a lot, or they were like actual sneakers that were reselling for a ton. Cause you can't get a lot of these on mm-hmm. for retail anymore. Um, and so I just did like a little Instagram layout thing, put his picture, zoomed in on the sneaks and then screenshotted the stock X from my iPhone and posted that mm-hmm. and literally like made a funny quip behind it mm-hmm. and people lost their mind. Like I had yeah. zero, I had maybe like 20 followers because they're personal followers. Yeah. And, um, I started posting those people thought they were really funny. And then my buddy that basically encouraged me to start the account, he shared it and he's got, he probably had 15,000 followers. He's a musician. Mm hmm. And that's where it kind of started to blow up uh, and people just didn't know what to do with it. Like both Christians and not Christians were like, what is this? <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, it's been interesting. That happened in March and like the beginning of March and I had like 20 posts and I went from zero to a hundred thousand followers by like the beginning of April, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, so it was very much out of control and I had no idea what I was doing. Like I had no agenda. I didn't know what it was. I didn't mm-hmm. know what I wanted to do with it, <clears throat> but I, I mean, it, it was clearly going viral. And mm-hmm. so yep. all these news agencies started reaching out. The today show reached out wow. like the New York times posted, the New Yorker posted about it. The wall street journal wrote about it. I mean, it's insane. And yeah. I'm just this nothing, nobody dude mm-hmm. <laughs> with no agenda or no, like I didn't want to be an activist. I didn't really care that much about mm-hmm. what yeah. pastors were wearing. I just thought it was kind of ridiculous. Like I was like, yeah. it just feels weird that these dudes are wearing thousand dollar kicks preaching to a ton of people. So, right. uh, fast forward. I, um, we're, I guess we've been doing this for seven months now and trying to, we've tried to pivot it a little bit to try to make it more positive. Cause there was a point there where it could have been extremely inflammatory. Like if mm-hmm. I wanted it, if I didn't stop for a while, I could have, 
it could have been a real like super negative breeding ground, even though there's still some negative stuff around it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so now we're here. So that's kind of mm. the down and dirty. Of so, it. so you said that you, you were already interested in sneakers before this, right? So you, cause we both have no, I, I know that there's this whole culture behind sneakers that are, that's really popular and we don't know anything about it. So you, you've uh -huh. been in that culture already. Yeah. I mean, just for a few years, like I didn't grow up with it. And as you can tell, like I'm, like a very average white dude. Like uh -huh. it, they, they initially I got into it for like the entrepreneurial aspect of it. Like the, the yeah. ability to like, if you can get lucky on one of these drops, you can resell one of these kicks for five, 10 X what it's worth. Right. Um, so that's initially why I got into it. And then like, it's kind of like an art thing. It, a lot of the sneakers are really interesting looking. I can't pull a lot of them off, but mm -hmm. it's just an interesting hobby. My, my wife is sick of it. And it's <laughs> kind of like a, at one point when we both had incomes, it was kind of a deep, dark spending hole. But um, so, yeah, I'm still into it. I like the collabs. I like, you know, the technology behind it and yeah. like how a lot of them look. So, yeah, I was into it before. And so that's kind of how I was able to pick out some of these sneakers that maybe a lot of other people would have overlooked. Yeah, yeah I would a lot of people known. just didn't care, didn't know mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of my thesis at the beginning. It was like, I guarantee you most of these most people in their congregations don't know what kind of commas are involved with these kind of sneakers so yeah. that's part of why i think it blew up right? yeah what um what kind of pushback have you gotten since because i it blew up it was basically an overnight success right like i mean you were you just kind of stumbled into this yeah and i think you i think it was a perfect time for this too because definitely the i mean these preachers are still like super popular but you could definitely feel the trend in christianity specifically of people getting tired of people making tons of money that are on stage and, and, and kind of showing that off. So it was like almost, it was a perfect time for this. Um, and what, so what kind of like negative feedback did you get pretty quickly that you weren't even, maybe you weren't even expecting so such harsh ones or whatever. What, what'd you get? Yeah. I had a lot of people I'd never heard of just message me and like, dude, what are you doing? Like, this is a terrible idea. You're going to cause division in the church. Like you're causing disunity. Like, how dare you? These people will do more good for the world than you'll ever do in your entire life. That kind of stuff, which is fair. Like a lot of people think that I was out there trying to just like be a, a gnat poking, like mm -hmm. annoying people in the church to make them pissed off for no reason. Mm -hmm. And I really wasn't trying to do that. Um, some people, you know, messaged me and said like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to be held accountable for the people that walk away from the faith because of this account, that kind of thing. Um, and initially that, that really mm. sucked to hear. It's like, dude, I'm not, yeah. I'm a Christian. Like, I'm not trying to, mm -hmm. like, is this legit? Like, I'm not trying to <laughs> get people to leave the church or anything. Yeah. Um, and then I would hear, I, you know, at the same time, all the media was happening around it. The, some of the pastors were reaching out, like some of the bigger ones mm -hmm. and basically kind of gave me a behind the curtain look like, Hey, the, a lot of these guys are getting harassed. A lot of the wives are getting harassed in their personal accounts. Um, you know, one dude's having a panic attack about it. And I, you know, me just like not being equipped for this emotionally or mm. anything, just being like, Oh shit. Like I, uh, I never intended that for happen. I'm going to stop doing this. This is a terrible thing. Yeah. So several messaged me over DMs. Some were pissed. Some understood, but some, um, some understood, but were also like, Hey, can you take this one down? They're harassing my wife. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll take it down. I don't want anybody's wife to get harassed. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, others, there was one church, like life church in Oklahoma city sent me kind of like a cease and desist from their photographer. Cause I used one of their photos, yeah. which whatever. <laughs> um, and then I, I had a phone call with one of the, one of like the biggest ones, like the leader of them all. And he basically was like, yeah, I get it. Like I get how this started. I get how I can kind of get, uh, how it was funny. And, uh, I disagree with what you're doing. And I think what you're doing is wrong, but like you do you, um, so I had to like kind of process through all that. My wife's like, my wife works at a mega church and she's like, I don't want to get fired because of this. And so like everybody, uh, it was kind of a, I had to process a lot of things. Like I brought it to my community group. They didn't know what to do with it. I brought it to my senior pastor. Like he was basically like, just keep doing what you're doing. Just make sure you're checking your heart with your community group. Cause ultimately there is some good that can come from this. Like people do need to, ex mm -hmm. I think it's worth, or his view was like, it's worth bringing this up yeah. just yeah. make sure that you're doing it in a way that's not, um, uh, like spiteful or pure, like trying to just be, uh, right. Right. I'm not sure what the word is, but have he basically you, just said, check your heart about it. Right yeah. now. Have you had any, um, any pastors or anybody reach out to you and say, man, this is like a good wake up call for me. Or like, this is uh, like it, it, where they received it in a way that's filled with humility that says, maybe I should think about, the way that I'm presenting myself, did you get any of that at all? 
Yeah, I mean, I had people from uh, like Redeemer in New York City, like Tim Keller's church. Some uh-huh. of his pastors reached out, and like, dude, we just got out of a leadership meeting where we talked about this and talked about how important this is. Or like, uh, there was a mega church in Minnesota that one of the execs messaged me. He was like, dude, the church has needed to have this conversation for a long time. It's gotten way out of hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of us have had to basically check ourselves. I mean, I've had people from, I've had siblings of the people that I post about message me or like, Hey, I didn't know how to bring this up with my brother, but this account has so important. And I've been meaning, I, like I've needed to talk with my brother about this. That's so great. All, yeah. All that's great. And like, I mean, pastors will uh, message me pretty much daily. Like, thanks for the conversation you started. Uh, this is worth considering like how we present ourselves, even if it's not fair, mm-hmm. like it's ultimately n- not super fair for some rando to be like, dude, F you for wearing a hundred dollar pair of shoes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I also think that it is kind of closed minded to not think that what you're wearing is communicating a message, you know? Right. Yeah. So overall I'd say the majority is positive and they see like, especially once they listen to my podcast, they understand that I'm not a douche. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I'm really not trying to be one. Um, but yeah, so overall, most people think it's positive. There's some that still think I'm just, you know, out there trying to get clicks or trying to get followers. But ultimately, like I started with zero followers and I could literally care less about getting any followers. Yeah. So. yeah. The, uh, and then all of a sudden this stupid little podcast starts <laughs> trashing you and you're like, what the heck is this? <laughs> so um, how'd you hear about our episode and then uh, we can kind of get into a little bit of that conversation because yeah. uh, he list because you listen to it, so um, uh-huh. our listeners listen to it. I'm the one who was criticizing it a little bit, so I'm, I yeah. can't be a I can't be a punk now that I'm talking to you. Like, <laughs> I, I gotta still talk, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, for um, sure. How did you find out about it? And then um, what are some of the feedback that you you would give us on what we were talking about? Yeah, yeah, and like in pure transparency, I had like. I mean, I guess it was a moment of narcissism. I was looking mm-hmm. up podcasts that were talking about the account. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do that periodically just because it's interesting to see what people's thoughts are. Right. Um, and, you know, it's, it's died off a ton. And so, like, not many people are talking about it anymore, which is fine. Yeah. But I just happened to be, like, I think I was about to drive home or something. I was just, I typed in the account in iTunes and I mm-hmm. saw, because I had listened to your first one, like, back when y'all had did, done the original one. Oh, Okay. And then saw like so and so changed his mind about preaching niggas. Like I guarantee I know where this is going, uh-huh. but I'm gonna listen to it anyway. And like I said at the time, I was super hungry, so I was probably <laughs> feeling a little too sensitive. <laughs> um, but I thought it was fair feedback because I get that all the time. It's like people in the comments, if you see, you were like, "Yeah, but this isn't the retail price." So like for I guess for people listening, the issue was uh, some people think that I'm manipulating the the content that I'm posting about in order to be more inflammatory or to be mm-hmm. yeah to get more clicks or to get more conversation going, which would be a pretty like easy thing for me to be doing. Like Mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't take, it doesn't take much like logic to say, Oh, he could easily just be whiting out things and making it seem worse than it is. Um, and so I wanted to talk just to say, I guess just to say that's not the case, even though it looks like it is, Mm -hmm. um, going back to how it started from the very beginning, I basically have been posting pictures with the thought like, Hey, if you were to try to go buy these sneakers today, this is what you would have to pay. Mm-hmm. Because ultimately I don't know what any of these guys or girls paid for any of this stuff, mm-hmm. but also they're not contributing anything to counter that. They're basically, they're up there wearing these sneakers that for a lot of people, like at least people that are into sneakers or designer wear, know that this stuff is expensive and mm-hmm. know that it communicates some form of prosperity or wealth or like I'm crushing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so the only thing I could do was say, look, here's what the market is, is demanding for this type of shoe, 800 bucks or whatever, and do with this. What, like, what are your th- thoughts on this? Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I get, so like some of the feedback from Eric, right? Yeah. What's your name? Eric. Yep. Yeah. Eric was, you must've been looking at StockX on your computer or mm-hmm. something. So on the StockX dashboard on your computer, it shows the retail price of like once it was released. So a lot of these shoes, um, I'll post with the StockX price mm-hmm. or like the last sale on StockX and on the desktop version, it'll show like, yeah, this retailed for $190. Yeah. My deal with that is there's no, you can't find it for that price anymore for like two seconds on launch day. It's worth 190 bucks. Mm-hmm. All the sneakerheads buy them up and immediately flip them because they're super hyped. So to me, um, it's more accurate to say, 
like even if they got these shoes for free, they're wearing a pair of shoes that today are worth 800 bucks. And by wearing them, they're basically foregoing the $800 to say to, to wear the kicks. So like, mm-hmm. that's my thinking. Mm-hmm. And some people will still be like, yeah, but that's not what they paid retail. And I'm like, yes, but that's not what they're worth. Mm-hmm. And so that's where, that's basically what I wanted to come on and say. Yeah, yeah. And wanted well, to hear and, your feedback. And, and so, yeah. So the one thing that I thought when I was doing the episode too is that, like you said, that, that you were taking a screenshot, you were editing out the retail part because on the on your um, laptop, it, it says retail. But then yeah. when you find out that, no, you're just looking at the StockX, which I downloaded the app, and it, the retail value is all the way down the bottom. So yeah. I was even like, okay, is there a way he could take a screenshot where you could still see it? And on the mobile app, there isn't. So, right, right. Um, so most of my argument was... if and that's how much th- effort I put into every post. It's like <laughs> three clicks in my phone. Like yeah. People think yeah. I'm researching all day. Yeah. Yeah. It's and literally you, just from my thumb. And you sent us um, a, a video of exactly what you do uh yeah. and so i we we'll be willing to share that if you if you like if that's if that's helpful too to show well, i mean you can just download just download the stock x app and you'll see yeah. that the retail value is pretty low so but i'm saying like yeah. he, he sent us a video of yeah. everything he does to post it onto yeah. instagram so, my, so the, the heart of my argument was i came to i found i thought that you were purposely editing it out so then when i saw it, i was like okay well i I can't buy anything then because <laughs> if if you're doing that, then what anything he's doing, I don't right. believe if you're literally manipulating the picture. Yeah. Um, I, I, here's my argument for, and, and people that listen to this podcast know that I am not a fan of celebrity pastors or even flaunting your wealth. Like yeah. I was literally only talking about the shoes. Cause even like Gucci belts, like do you yeah. really need like, there's no way around. Like, there's no way around. Like that is the price. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. Um, but the the one argument I would give for if the shoes are worth eight hundred bucks, then you're foregoing eight hundred bucks, right? Um, that's kind of a slippery slope to me because you could, I have like sports memorabilia that's technically worth a lot of money, but mm-hmm. but I, I that's a hobby of mine. So am I foregoing the money I could get for it? Um, my my uh, father in law gave me the. Uh, original thriller vinyl. I don't know if that's worth anything, oh, but it's probably snap. worth it's probably worth something. So that's legit. <laughs> so am I foregoing however much money I could get for that by keeping it? Like it's a little bit of a slippery slope that argument. But at the same time, I am not a fan of preachers flaunting wealth, which is what it seems like it's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say the the retail part that I thought was being edited out. You if you go on your phone to the actual like Safari, then that retail is there. So mm. it'd be a very easy way to use the if you use the app, it's not there, but if you use the mobile and the same thing, it is there. Uh-huh. But I don't know if that really changes the opinion because, like you said, I don't really know it very much. But there's most likely Steam Verdict's not buying these shoes for the retail value. <laughs> I get, but that. that's yeah. that's a good word though. I have li- like I've. I've just been using the StockX app. I've literally yeah. never done that with the Safari piece on my phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a fair thing for me to do moving forward. Like yeah. people think that's disingenuous, but I honestly have just this has worked since the beginning. But yeah. if it shows the retail price as a screenshot on Safari, like maybe that is the way to go. Like yeah. especially I, like if you felt passionate enough to say like, "Hey, he could be showing the retail price and he's not." I think that's a fair piece of feedback, and I could try yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah, because um, if literally though, if once I felt like it was maybe manipulated, I didn't want anything to do with the account but if yeah. if if you're showing literally cuz you're not even saying this is how much you're buying it for they're saying look here's info you do it with it what you will yeah and and I and I'm all for that if they're willing to wear the shoes in public mm-hmm. then we're willing to look it's not bad for us to be like hey here's what it is here's the retail it's it's 180 bucks but if you're know the shoe culture you know you're probably not getting it for that but that's your decision mm-hmm. just like if if the pra- if the pastors didn't want us to have that decision, don't wear those shoes. Yeah. Right. I or get don't that. be a public so, figure. Don't right. list yourself as a public figure. I, I so get like, all that, yeah. I've I've it's like it brings up several philosophical discussions. So like one, you you're kind of the question about the slippery slope. I agree that it's a slippery slippery slope, but also I guess the fact is you are foregoing the money for the sports memorabilia uh-huh. memorabilia. Mm-hmm. And so that's, what's caused a lot of people to have like an existential crisis about like, Oh shit. Like yeah. I have this $40,000 car. Am I a hypocrite too? Yeah. Um, like I think it's worth asking. That's a like, great conversation to have. I agree. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the longer term thing that mm-hmm. I'm going to try to build on. Cause I think the sneakers thing is going to go away eventually. Yeah. But that's caused me to like one, feel some guilt, which I don't know if was rooted in sin or not, but it's has made me consider like 
that question itself. Like, oh, okay, this these two monitors that I have that I'm looking at, mm-hmm. I could probably sell these and have 200 bucks and then give it to the poor. Mm-hmm. So like that that line doesn't really stop anywhere. Yeah. And so people will always come in the comments like, so and so could have sold those for 1,200 bucks and fed all the poor. <laughs> and then their congregants will come in and it's like, yeah, he gave away two million dollars last year to the poor. Right. And like, still he could have sold these. It's, there's no reason yeah. for everybody to have those. So mm-hmm. it's it. In t- today in 2019, there's not really a great answer. I think it's worth thinking about for ourselves. But also, I do think the, cr- the criticism or the critique still s- stands. Like you're communicating a message by mm-hmm. wearing a pair of shoes that either retailed at 1,200 bucks or sneakerheads were willing to pay 1,200 bucks for. Mm-hmm. Like either that's flexing that you've got rich friends, or that you got super lucky on release day, or that you just went to a resale shop and spent 1200 bucks on kicks. Like all the options aren't that great. Like yeah. the one thing I've heard is like the congregants will gift this pair of sneakers to their pastor. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, got so, it. Like, thanks for wearing it for an hour a week, but you're also blasting this to 500,000 people. Or like in Furtick's case, he's got 2 million followers. Yeah. He's got yeah. a new outfit on every single time he preaches Yeah, mm-hmm. that it, that I can't even tell how much his pants and shirt are worth. And it's like, maybe mm-hmm. it's petty, but it is, it is, an interesting bigger discussion about like what do we do with pastors or people in general getting rich off of the gospel or Christian themes. Right. Like that's caused a lot of people to and myself too questions like should we care if they're if he has a ten million dollar house? Like why do we feel anger towards a pastor for being able to afford a new outfit every Sunday? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, partly that's that's partly what's like inspired the account a little bit because I was like this kind of pisses me off like yeah. I'm working mm-hmm. hard I'm tithing I'm trying to tithe in obedience and this dude's getting to rock these fresh sneaks like I don't mm-hmm. I don't know yeah. what that is so yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's yeah. that's fair and I think that like from from our position as as pastors and we're we're church planters we Eric planted we're rolling in it <laughs> yeah. yeah so we got a ton of money yeah. <laughs> and, uh, raising you support see is our so shoes. fun <laughs> yeah yeah but I think that like what I've discovered from from being a pastor is that people, this is the way that people can look at pastors is they don't want you to be struggling, but they don't want you to be doing better than they are right. financially because there's this, there's this idea of, well, you should be suffering for the gospel, but not me. Right. Right. But, but you as the pastor should. <laughs> yeah. And so there's this whole idea as of, if it's not hard enough. Right. Right. <laughs> and th- exactly. And there's this whole idea of, well, I can make six figures, but my pastor can't. Right, you know? and and, and I'm I, looking for it. Right, 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 exactly. And and so there's there is a double standard. And now the Bible also talks about how there are different standards for pastors. Yeah. So that that's a fair argument as well. And now to be clear, we don't make six figures, but <laughs> we who now you combined we don't make it would be nice <laughs> combined. But it's Jeez. it's still like a conversation that is important. And what I love about what you've done. Is just as what you said. It's forced you to look at yourself too. Like yeah. we should not just say, "Oh, this is so terrible about this pastor or this person." We should think, "Yeah, that is a little messed up." Now, what should I look at in my life that that is also a little messed up? Right. Or why do I think it's messed up? Right. Like I, yeah. I I don't know what the root of that is, other than it. I don't feel envious of these dudes, but there must be something that causes so many people to feel angry about it. I don't know what that is, but I think mm-hmm. it's worth dissecting a little bit. I, but I, I also, think, from your side, like yeah. I've talked with other pastors and my buddy Justice was a church planner in Dallas and he was talking about like how crappy it feels to have like one moment of nice things, like to have mm-hmm. to buy, save up and buy a nice pair of jeans or like go out to eat at a semi nice restaurant or go on vacation mm-hmm. and people to make snide comments when they get back. Yeah. Like there is something to that. Like that sucks. Being a pastor is not a luxurious thing. Right. Yeah. Even, even in like a Westernized baseline, like you're not even in a foreign country planning a church, you're in the West and it's still freaking difficult. Like Mm -hmm. you're having to be all things to all people or at least in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's hard enough to not have people criticizing the way you spend your money. Exactly. And so I don't know, I don't, I don't know where we end up with the conversation, but so far it's, it seems to be something that the church mm-hmm. is needed to address. I, I don't think we need to 
decide where the line is where i think we want to have like i that's what i want to do i kind of want to make okay well here's the line when you're making this much money that's too much as a pastor or or if you're getting that from your church like maybe if you do book sales that's one thing but you are using your platform in order to sell your books so there's there i think it's easy for us to make it black and white where it's so gray yeah it it really is the heart of 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 the people and Mm -hmm. i was even thinking I was just trying to like go through like the gift. Let's let's go. Let's talk about a gift. Like mm-hmm. if Patrick gets a gift. If you are a, a bivocational pastor who is working another job in order to support the church, and somebody says, "Hey, I want to bless you with a trip to Disney World, all paid. Fl- like you, you can fly there. That's what I want to bless you with." I don't see anything wrong with that. That's maybe God blessing them through through that person. But if Steve Furtick gets a free vacation to Disney World, all of a sudden now I'm like, that's not okay. So why is that? What 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 makes it where it's okay for one side and not the other? Is it just because of the heart? Like that that's a conversation that I think your account has really started to bring up for me because mm-hmm. I've gotten free stuff and I've yeah. easily accepted it. Someone gives me a trip to Disney World, I'm going. Like mm-hmm. yeah, and, and I'm absolutely. taking pictures of it. Like <laughs> so like what that that it's kind of caused a great conversation that I don't know the answer to, but it does feel it's a struggle in my own heart on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? The tough part about the Furtick example specifically is that it's just so consistent with him. So like if we were talking yeah. just about Stephen Furtick, who, I mean, let's give it to him, communicates really effectively yeah, and has, great can build a freaking congregation and can get people fired up really well. Like I yeah. am not, he does that infinitely better than I could ever do. And he yeah. has clearly done a ton of things right. Um, I guess the thing that makes it... Co- different is that he's consistently in a different outfit that's incredibly Mm -hmm. expensive Mm -hmm. we know that he has a 10 million dollar house we know that he's at the top basically making all the decisions with like no elders Mm -hmm. uh it's it's it it feels different to say like okay these dudes are church planners they're literally never doing anything flashy obviously someone gifted this to them obviously they're not crushing it but to Stephen Furtick and his 2 million followers, he's got only right. overproduced videos of him quoting himself and then wearing a new outfit each time mm-hmm. and his $10 million home is in the news. Maybe it's not $10 million. I don't know how much it is. Yeah, um, multi-million dollar. Yeah, home. so like there's clearly a pattern of even if I'm not saying it, I want to project a certain kind of image. And mm-hmm. maybe that image is working for him. Clearly it's working for him. Yeah. But I think that's where the big divide is. It's like, I think for me, if I was in that position, I would want to be so careful about projecting an image that is humble and not yeah. like, uh, look how awesome I am. I know he's right. not even saying that. And it's like, it's there again, it's another slippery slope to like judge the hearts behind people. Yeah, but, yeah. but all we have to look at are the pictures and videos that these dudes and girls curate themselves. It's the fruit they're showing, right? Right. Yeah. And so it's like, so people will criticize me about like, you don't know how much these dudes have paid for these shoes. And like, I don't, all I can see yeah. is what they are posting themselves. Right. And, uh, that's all I have to work with. So I've, it, yeah, I don't yeah. know. It, like as, as public mm-hmm. figures, is it, should, like, should we feel wrong about being like, mm, I don't know about this. Like this dude's putting it out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. critique it or criticize you it. You didn't go to his house and like sneak into his closet and take pictures. Absolutely He's not. Purposely yeah. showing you that. Yeah. Right. So right. yeah. What well, are you gonna say? I'm sorry. This I cut is you off. what. That's okay. This and this is what I've always stood on for the podcast. The, the last episode was. Oh, comes, here we go. Suck up. Now that we're on it, I'm the one who. Golly. <laughs> it comes. Down, I knew it was coming. I knew it was down coming. to the lifestyle for right. me. And that's exactly what you're saying. We can see the lifestyle that Stephen Furtick has. Or we were talking before we started recording, Eric and I were about how uh, Perry Noble posted on Twitter one time about, hey, can anybody get me free or discounted tickets to Disney World? I saw that, yep. And it's like he's using his platform to get stuff. And that to me just feels dirty and feels inappropriate. And so, it, and 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 when you're taking the example of a bivocational pastor, we can see his lifestyle. We can see how hard that person is working, and then we can see not that Stephen Furtick isn't working hard, and that he can have nice things or can't do nice things. But 
that's when it gets down to whatever we are projecting and the lifestyle that that we have. And we are giving though like the two extreme pat extreme yeah. examples. Yeah. We're giving the church poor church planner and the richest pastor in America. Right. What about the ones in the middle? Mm-hmm. What about the ones that are making one hundred twenty thousand and are gifted a car or something mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that? That's where I think the main heart discussion is, and that is where it's the heart yeah. that we really need to talk about because. Should there be a cap on how much pastors make? Like for me, I have one. Mm-hmm. Not that I think I'll ever even get close to it, but <laughs> it's 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 two million. Is my <laughs> it's two million. <laughs> but like, Same. That that's Same. where I think the discussion needs to really be is is that middle yeah. ground. Yeah, Stephen Furtick. Like we're all on the same page that he, what I, I believe what he's doing is wrong. Mm-hmm. Where. And then church planners like, yeah, you can only get so much. But what about that mm-hmm. middle ground of people that I don't know? That that's where it gets tricky and that's why i like the conversation that's been brought up from your account and i like it better now that i know you're not waiting out um retail yeah, for sure for sure but, that's fair but yeah um i still think it'd be cool if you had the picture where it had the retail value i think that would get any of those arguments are gone now yeah, yeah but i received that so, yeah so um but yeah i i'm on the same page on the on what the conversation is bringing up and i do like like i was even looking at it today you never say like any judgment on the comment. It's always like just some kind of yeah. like joke basically. Yeah. And, and that's how let- I started doing it. Cause I, I never wanted to be a, like talking head, like a Twitter, right. just constant spout of mm-hmm. the church needs to do this. The church uh-huh. needs like, that's so exhausting to like yeah. be that type of person or to even consume that. Right. Cause like, yes, the church comprised of imperfect people are mm-hmm. doing terrible at a lot of things all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that's very helpful, but I think it is helpful to, for whatever reason, the, these topics about like materialism and celebrity culture and like how we portray ourselves on social media, for whatever reason, all that stuff came together and is being my account is helping drive that conversation. I think that that's the thing I'm trying to anchor to is like mm-hmm. we should all be thinking and considering those things. Mm-hmm. Like I, the reason I think to go back to the, kind of the the massive like top of the bell curve of pastors, they'll never end up on my account because they're too busy pastoring and mm-hmm. they don't have social media teams and they don't like aren't on tour, aren't doing all that kind of thing. <laughs> I don't think all that stuff is inherently wrong, but there's a reason that a select group of people are catching my attention Const- versus always, all these yeah. dudes. So mm-hmm. like I interviewed a guy in Fort Worth, one of my best friends, who's a, a pastor at the city church. And he was like, dude, I don't, I'm not on social media because I'm too busy trying to like pastor the hundred people that are coming to my church. And mm-hmm. like, that's a full-time job. So like, then it gets into the question about like the book sales and the speaking tours. Mm-hmm. Like, so people will come into the comments. I always say like, yeah, but this dude has book deals. He goes on speaking tours. And I'm also like, yeah, but what's he writing his book about? And who mm-hmm. is he selling his book to? Or who yeah, is he initially right. like preaching a full sermon series through from his own book? Like that seems like another really dicey topic and if you look they all speak at each other's churches and I doubt they're doing it for free so like they'll write a book Mm -hmm. they'll pub it to their 30,000 person congregation go on tour to all their homies churches that are also mega churches Mm -hmm. pub their book and then they'll all invite each other to each other's conferences like that seems like a pretty good freaking business model to me (laughs) and and, and, and I think something is going to come from that like I don't think that's going to keep going Right. And, and for a lot of them, like I, I remember I was really into Paranoble and Stephen Furtick way back in the day. Like the board that runs those churches are each other. Like Paranoble's board was Stephen Furtick and some of those big, mm-hmm. like, so it's like, wait, you're all getting the same, doing the same thing. Yeah. Like, is that actual accountability right. or is that just being able to get away with stuff? And I don't know, but. Mm-hmm. Um, and I doubt they're doing any of that maliciously. I think it just must be a product of, look, this is where Christian culture has gone in 2019. Mm-hmm. Like, this is how we get the word out on books. Like, I've thought about doing a book. Like, I would like to get as much publicity possible if I did a mm-hmm. book. Like, I get yeah. it. Yeah, I, like I understand the like the economics of wanting to go on speaking tours and having like probably an actual good friend that's like, dude, come speak at my church. We love mm-hmm. what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, and the byproduct is you get a ton of exposure. You sell a bunch of books. Like I don't. Yeah. At the at the root of it, I don't think it, anything's wrong about it, but it does mm-hmm. just strike something in me that's like, is this like is God good with this? Like is is he honored by dudes getting super wealthy off of building platforms off of mm-hmm. telling people about Jesus? 
and then capitalizing off it. I don't know. Like I, yeah. and I don't have an answer, but that is a question that's come up. Yeah. Well, well, that's all it even gets into like, sometimes I would feel weird walking into a Christian bookstore that's selling a giant picture of Jesus for hundreds of dollars <laughs> in your local community. And I'm you like, know how much like communion trays actually are? Yeah, communion trays are. <laughs> They're like, I went to buy, I was like, what the heck? <laughs> Why is this just, so Somebody's get getting rich off of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just get a woven basket. I don't need <laughs> this giant communion tray. But like, I, that's it's the same feeling for me. As well, and I'm glad that a lot of Christian bookstores are dying because they've been making money off of Jesus. And there's something weird to, about that. And Jesus didn't even make money off of Jesus. Jesus survived is what he did. And but Jesus so was hard. bankrolled by by um, like the women that would follow him. That's, yeah. So That's, like so there is he had money right, in order yeah. to do stuff. What I'm saying is he wasn't out there selling stuff. Yeah, he, he was out there preaching the gospel. He was out there telling people about, and it was all free. Like th- that, that's what he was doing. But then you know that's where it's such a slippery slope because we both get paid. Yeah, and so people and he was can also say the Jesus. Same thing about us. He was also he, Jesus. He is also Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, you're right. So it's it's such a difficult thing, but it's that same feeling to me of like buying this giant mural of a whitewashed Jesus and. S- a celebrity pastor wearing this stuff. And also to, to just comment about the their speaking tours, like, and the pastor that's at a church of 100 people, because that's about where we are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we we are pastoring. The mega church pastors, they're not pastoring that community. They're speaking. And that's their, that's their job. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But like, they're not necessarily in the trenches like maybe they used to be. But once you get to a church that size, you can't. It's not, it's not realistic to expect a guy who's pastoring tens of thousands of yeah. people to be the pastor to tens of thousands of people. And should we fault them for being so effective that they grew a massive church? Like, yeah. I don't... Yeah, I don't think so. So it's just, it like, so part of me wants to be like, look, this is how it is. There's no real stopping point in discussing it. I'm just gonna put my head in the sand. But then also, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I don't know why there's a stirring within me that's like, something about this doesn't seem right. And is it just within me that's like, I wish I could have a huge platform and make money off of speaking Mm -hmm. and be well loved by millions of people. Maybe that's it. Or maybe Mm -hmm. it's, I don't know why he's pushing me towards this, but I think that's where the bigger discussion is, is like, what are we to do with generating wealth from preaching the gospel or a Christian message or a motivational Mm -hmm. message that started from a church? Like it's good. Is it, is it, is the certain in our hearts from jealousy or greed, or is it the Holy Spirit? Right. And that's what we need to be praying that we're being discerned about. Is that, what is that stirring? Yeah. Because if it's the Holy Spirit, we need to be making Instagram accounts and pointing it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If it's jealousy and greed, we should be canceling it. Yeah, like, yeah we, that, I should be stopping immediately. And that's what yeah. I've, I've basically wrestled with since the beginning because, you know, I have like actual comedians and actors and musicians that follow me just for the comedy. And so yeah. like... There's part of me that's like, do I, am I appealing too much or am I being too soft about this? Or am I just trying to be entertaining so much that mainstream people are following me or yeah. am I causing a discussion that he wanted to happen? Like, why has he made this stupid subject matter blow up mm-hmm. in such a way that, um, is causing all these different questions? I don't know, but that's something yeah. I definitely wrestle with because it's, yeah, so, that's awesome. And so I, I would what I want to say is I do appreciate I appreciate your humility because you when you sent us our the message about our podcast and you said you were hungry that day but I didn't take it as like <laughs> mm-hmm. oh he's pissed I took right, it right. as like you were like you were like hey it's a good conversation we'll, and then we said hey you want to come on he said yeah we'll do it yeah. so yeah. and then I re, I re listened back to it I was like oh my gosh if I knew he was gonna listen I would not have said it <laughs> as harsh as <laughs> that's, I did that's the risk <laughs> you take that I would something out in the in the <laughs> ether yeah. there yeah. yeah. So you're, like, account, you're like liable for how everyone interprets it. Yeah, right. I, wasn't, so, I wasn't mad either, but I, I did like, I felt like it was important to clear that portion up just yeah, because I, I don't want anything out there to think of people thinking that I'm some dude in his basement trying to just cause division. Yeah. It's just, so, it, it's just an, a different way of mm-hmm. a different way of causing a conversation, I guess. Yeah. And, and you being willing to come on knowing that like, at least I had issues with it. And we've kind of been able to have conversation and, and find common ground on things shows humility and shows kind of your heart too. Yeah. So I really do appreciate you coming on. I appreciate um, that. 
And uh, and why don't you? Because I mean, I can honestly have this conversation about this yeah. pretty much all day. Yeah. <laughs> but um, why don't you uh, let everyone know? They already know about you, but tell everyone where you can find Preachers and Sneakers <laughs> <laughs> and any other information it's you want to get. It's, a called, it's an app called Instagram. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and like where they can find more information about you. Just kind of plug whatever you want. Or to your plug. podcast. Talk about your podcast. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. So uh, on Instagram, we're at Preachers Letter N Sneakers. It's kind of a mouthful. On Twitter, we're Preachers and Sneakers with no vowels. Mm-hmm. I've got a website, preachersandsneakers.com. We actually just launched a merch release today. Oh, how ironic. You're, you're selling merch. <laughs> oh, but there we go. We're raising, yeah, we're raising money for... Preachers and Sneakers. <laughs> uh, we're raising money for Charity Water, which they basically build wells for people in other countries and basically uh, hold themselves accountable for the money. So they basically use 100% of the money that they raise to build wells because they're funded by outside donors. So all their op- operating costs are funded by outside donors. So mm-hmm. we're using the merch to raise money for that. That's going to be live until Saturday this week. Um, some, it's pretty cool stuff. And <laughs> I've got a podcast, the Preachers and Seekers podcast. If you just type in Preachers, it most likely will come up in iTunes or Spotify. Mm-hmm. So yeah, trying to do this podcast thing too to hopefully have meaningful conversation. I've like, I have six episodes out right now. Uh, I've got three more in the queue that I'm waiting to get back from my engineer. So i um, trying to get smarter people than I. And like, I mean, I l- look for opportunities to come talk about this because it helps me mm-hmm. process what I believe and kind of the reasons why I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. And I, you know, y'all's podcast stuck out not only because it was basically challenging what I was doing, but also you guys are smart and clearly are living it. So right, it's helpful for me to not just be speaking into a vacuum and, um, so yeah, this is beneficial for me, obviously. Yeah. So I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah. yeah, man, we really appreciate you coming on, and um, we'll uh, we'll keep following. Okay, we'll follow you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, if you change your mind again, just uh, make another episode. <laughs> yeah, just wait till next week's yeah. episode. Yeah, we'll I'm sure to shut you down. <laughs> yeah, when you're not here. What's up, everybody? Thanks for checking out this clip of Not Your Mama's Christian Podcast. You know the drill. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. You can find the whole episode anywhere you get your podcast. You can also follow us on social medias, or you can do none of it. What do we care? <laughs>